Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing a uh, preview of this evening's main slate, um, uh, MLB. I'm going to do it solo. It's probably going to be a little bit shorter than you might be used to um, with me and Bobby doing it. And uh, hopefully I could uh, live up to Bobby's content because he's probably responsible for most of it when we do it together. Um, in any case, uh, this is going to be a very projection-based uh, approach. And as you know, the you know, proje projection-based approach is probably the weakest way to, you know, to, to attack baseball. Well, maybe I shouldn't say it that way. I mean, you can use a projection-based approach, but when it comes to actually building your lineups, you really have to be a good constructor. You have to be, you have to go for, you know, the, the, the right amount of correlation, the right amount of differentiation, uh, the right amount of ownership fade and, and realize that baseball, you know, the projections are very fragile. I mean, the amount of times they actually hit right on the median is very, 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 very small. Um, and it, all baseball is, is a matter of range of outcomes, you know, just trying to deal with those situations where teams get zero, 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 and then they, they, they go off at an inning or something like that. And on the individual player level, those guys that just go over four, over four, over four, and then hit three home runs. Um, that's just the way baseball distributes results and pitching. Yes. Pitching is much more predictable, but even still, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta mind your P's and Q's when you when it comes to just, uh, looking at projections, uh, with respect to you know, making your lineups, but you do have to start somewhere. And so I'm going to be not going to be displaying them, but I'm going to be referring to the uh, true DFS, uh, projections, um, as a uh, construct for how we're going to at least start with, with this slate. Um, if you want access to all the premium stuff, you know, sign up and pay for it. <laughs> but this is hopefully going to be a, uh, a decent preview, at least of where I think I'm going to go on the slate. Um, okay, so let's just start with uh, Arizona and Washington. And I currently don't have either pitcher here in play much at all. Uh, you have Eric Fetty at 8,300. I think he's set to go for uh, for for uh, for Washington, and he was actually kind of sneaky last year. I mean, he was he was much better than people give him credit for. Everybody really wanted to attack him, but put up a couple of decent games. But on a slate like this, I mean, there's a lot of much better options than him. So uh, I'm not going to play him. Nor am I going to play Merrill Kelly. Um, Again, he's just not projecting really well at all. And it's not even really close. So neither of these guys are in, in, in play for me. Um, with respect to the hitting, though, uh, I will say that you know, it looks as though – it does look as though Arizona is, is in play. Um, and, and the particular guys is, is Dalton Varsho, Christian Walker, um, Haven Smith looks okay. David Peralta set beer. Uh, and then Cattell Marte paying up just a little bit. But yeah, I have Arizona rated as my second best, uh, you know, value adjusted st stack on the slate. So if you want to play, you know, uh, uh, spend up pitchers, uh, Arizona looks to, you know, be a good way to, to, to make that work. Um, Washington, I am not quite getting to, uh, at least right now. Uh, you, you'd think you'd want to, though, because Merrill Kelly can be somewhat poor. But uh, for now, uh, for this particular uh, look, I do like Arizona as really uh, right now my second best uh, overall value stack on, on the slate. Um, now, again, if I rated these by just pure fantasy points, I mean, whatever, I mean, they'll probably be like sixth or something like that. But, but when you factor in price, um, I definitely like Arizona kind of set. Um, all right. So let's look at uh, Boston against Toronto. Uh, we have Pavetta against Berrios, and I'm not in my current numbers getting to either of these guys pretty much at all. Um, as, as Bobby kind of, he, he put it pretty well yesterday. I mean, both these pitchers have potential, probably just enough potential to keep me off of the hitting Maybe we'll get to that in a second, but certainly not good enough to, you know, to play against these uh, 
against these bats, which are pretty, pretty potent, actually. You know, speaking of which, I have Toronto currently rated as uh, a very, 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 very good stack. I mean, on, on, a, on a raw points per, uh, basis, they I have them ranked number one overall. And even and even with the uh, value rankings that I use, I'm, I'm getting them ranked fourth. So that's overall pretty good. So maybe I changed my mind. Maybe it is. Maybe Pavetta isn't good enough to keep me off the Toronto guys. So. Uh, so Toronto, it look expensive, but uh, maybe we can make it work. I, I have guys, you know, if you want to spend up, you can play Guerrero, Springer, Bichette, you know, whatever. But you can, you can, you can make it work. You have Zach Collins who's hitting, hitting the ball really well. You have Espinal. You could use him in your stacks. You could play, you know, uh, Kirk if you want to do that. You won't play Kirk and Collins, I don't think. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you get a catcher and, and a DH. Maybe they both get in there. I'm not sure. Uh, and on the other side of the of the plate, Boston, I don't really, I'm not really getting to them today. I have them like fifth in, in, in raw and in value. I really have them down on the list. So for me in this game, neither pitcher and I have Toronto. So let's, let's kind of keep stock of where we are. I think this is kind of good to do. So right now through two games, I like the Arizona and Toronto stats and no pitching so far. All right, so uh, let's get to uh, San Francisco against the Mets, which uh, is uh, a place that I'm going to be targeting pitchers. It's pretty – It's I think it's supposed to be a frost warning overnight here in the New York area. I don't know if that's going to apply to the actual game time, but uh, the weather I think might be somewhat chilly, and that doesn't help. And I, I currently have both pitchers in this game as numbers one and two overall on the slate. So the only negative of that is that if you play both of them, you can only get one win bonus. But uh, I, you know, I've been told that that's not something you need to worry about too much. So um, Rodon, I have rated number one by a decent amount and I have Bassett rated number two overall on the slate. So you know, it, it correlates kind of nicely because you do get crappy weather. It's going to affect both of them. And if you get an umpire that helps you, you're going to get to both of them. So uh, I think pairing both these two together certainly makes sense. Um, we'll see what else shows up a little later, but uh, this is where I would start. And I was about to say, obviously, since I like both pitchers, I'm really not into both hit both both sets of bats. But that's not exactly the, the case because if if you did get you know good prices on the Mets or San Francisco, you can get good leverage against what's going to be probably good you know good ownership uh, on both those pitchers. Let me just take a look and see. Uh, nah, I'm not getting uh, any San Francisco or Mets today. So it's both. So again, let's summarize. So again, so it's both these pitchers. Rodon and Best Bassett, and currently my favorite stacks are Arizona and Toronto. So let's let's move ahead. Pitching, uh, it, well, Chicago and Tampa. I see a little rain cloud over there, so you have to watch that, and you always have to watch for the wind. So I'm not going to speculate on that right now, except to say that the wind's blowing in. Both these pitchers get a bump, but just don't think either of them are going to get a bump good enough for me to play them. So those guys are out. Um, Chicago and Tampa with respect to the hitting. Mm, okay. So I have Tampa rated as like my fifth favorite on a value basis and maybe second best on, well, maybe tied for second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, uh, on a raw basis. So, so if you get the weather you want, you know what I mean? Like if you don't get the wind blowing in and the end doesn't rain out or whatever it is, I actually do think Tampa could be kind of sneaky here. I, I'm seeing them at pretty low ownership as well. So this, this is, this could something, this is something you could do. Um, again, watch the weather. You don't want to play hitting when, when the wind's blowing in 20 miles an hour, you don't want to play hitting when it's raining and cold or whatever. But if you get a favorable weather condition here, uh, I wouldn't mind playing the, the Tampa guys at low ownership. Uh, so again, summarizing so far. Uh, Rodon and Bassett, still clearly my top two pitchers, followed by, you could play Arizona, Toronto, 
And then we're getting Tampa in is kind of another, another stack that you might want to think about. Okay, uh, moving on. Well, hold on a minute. There's one other thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Minnesota, Kansas City, uh, Paddock against Lynch. Uh, Paddock, uh, and he had a lot of a lot of hype coming into the league a couple of years ago. It hasn't really panned out. Um, I'm not really getting to him today, nor am I getting to, uh, to Lynch. But what I am getting, if I'm not mistaken, is the hitting. Uh, let me just double check that. Yeah, so currently, um, and this was the case last night too, it just didn't, you know, it just didn't work out, but these Minnesota guys rating are rating really, really strong on the value scale. Um, they're pretty cheap. And, and actually on the raw scale, they're rate, rating pretty well also. Not as, you know, not as high as Toronto or anything like that, but this is a very, very strong option here. So um, I also see them getting ownership. So you have to keep that in mind, but let's just go over who this is going to be. It's going to be, it looks like uh, Sanchez, obviously he has to plays. Ursula, um, Sano, Correa, pretty much all these guys, Polanco. Garlic, if he gets in, Jeffers. So pretty much all these Minnesota guys are in play. So, um, again, the problem is going to be ownership. I currently, and this is early, I have them kind of as the second highest owned stack on the board. Um, can't imagine that being the case, but that's what I have right now. So uh, that's certainly something to look for. And the other thing is that is that I have KC rated as my third highest best value stack, tied with, tied with Toronto on a value basis. Now, again, not on a raw basis, but I definitely have, um, have Kansas city as a, as a possible. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to really get to it in a, in a handful of lineups, but if I'm playing a lot of them, I might get to Kansas city. So um, only have a couple of games left, pretty compact slate. So let's kind of summarize where we are again. We have uh, Rodon and Bassett, pretty clear standouts. And then we have a couple of teams to pick from as far as hitting goes. We have Arizona, Toronto, Tampa, Minnesota, and then maybe some Kansas City. Okay, moving on. Texas against Seattle. You have Logan Gilbert versus Dane Dunning. Um, Logan Gilbert, 9,800 seems very, very, uh, a very rich price. And he, um, he actually, well, you know, I have to, I have to say that I forgot to, uh, give a couple of guys their due here. So I've been saying that Rodon and Bassett kind of stand out and they do, but if you didn't want to play, by the way, some other pitchers, you know, that Daniel Lynch, who I just kind of glossed over because like Minnesota looks to be a really, really good stack. He's actually pretty good at 5,500, you know, if you wanted to play something like that. And, and I, I went over Barrios for Toronto pretty quickly against Boston again. And again, it's not a bad play. You know, I just don't have him as good of a play as Rodon and Bassett. So I, I didn't want to sell those two pitchers short, Lynch and, and, and Barrios. Um, I do think there are decent options if you didn't want to go, right, the, the Rodon-Bassett route, but Rodon Bass just kind of stand out to me. Um, and I just, you know, I just want to get back to that. Logan Gilbert is, you know, he rates for me, like, okay. He rates below Bassett. Um, the way I have it ranked, I have Rodon much better than Bassett and then Gilbert worse than Bassett, but not by as much as Bassett is worse than Rodon. So for example, like I would play maybe, you know, if you played 100% Rodon, I played maybe 100% Rodon, maybe 60%, 65% Bassett, 35% Gilbert, something like that. That's that's the way I would kind of like rate these guys in terms of percentages. Um, uh, but I wouldn't play Gilbert any more than I would play, you know, Daniel Lynch. Like if I was going to play Gilbert as a spend up, I'd probably rebuild and, and, and try to, you know, maybe play the 5,500 Lynch or 7,300 Barriers or something like that. Um, so I'm not, I guess I'm not going to probably get to Gilbert 
and Dunning just doesn't really do it for me as far as the upside goes. So I'm probably not going to get to him. Um, with respect to the hitting in this game, pull this up. Not really getting to any of that. So um, let me just make sure of that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to get to any of Texas or Seattle in this game. I don't believe so. Uh, again, summarizing for now, you have Rodon and Bassett. We're we'll just going to throw into the kind of summary here: Rodon and Bassett, and then maybe if you wanted to drop down to Lynch or um, Barrios, you could do that. Um, and then as far as stacks go, Arizona, Toronto, uh, maybe some Tampa, Minnesota, and uh, that's it for now. We get to the last game, and that's Baltimore against Oakland. And you basically have a – wow, due to a schedule change, it is not going to be included in this set. So we don't have to analyze that. So that's the summary. I, once again, I, I do think that Rodon and Bassett look to be kind of standouts on the slate. And then if you wanted to pivot, you know, just kind of build a different way, you could play – you know, the Lynch or the um, or Barrios. And I think he gave us some decent stacks to work with, you know, between Toronto, uh, maybe some Tampa, some Zona, Minnesota, and uh, you could build that way. The other thing you could do, you could just pop all these into Saber Sim or an optimizer just to see what it comes up with. And I promise you this, that if you, if you plow these things into Saber Sim, you're probably not going to get as much of what I said as, as you think. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, maybe maybe we'll do it later if I, if I go live, but um, I'll, I'll leave that as kind of a teaser uh, to see what Saberson would provide based on my existing numbers. Um, what I want to do before I go is I want to just take one real quick look at FanDuel. Um, and let me see. FanDuel, um, so what's different about FanDuel is that it adds another game to the slate. It adds the Yankee game to the slate. So that does actually change a couple of things. Let me just look at it real quick. Um, yeah, it adds, well, this actually includes the Baltimore game. Right, okay, I get it. And this also includes the Angels and the Astros. And wow, it includes all these other games. And this is actually pretty interesting. So I'll give this a separate look here. So let me take a look, uh, first of all, pitching-wise, see if these other games kind of come into play here. And yeah, as a matter of fact, I do have Rodon as, as the top pitcher over here, but these other games come into play, and I have a feeling that they're going to be lower owned as a result. You know, people get used to playing, the, you know, the uh, players that are on both slates and they don't put as much research into the into these like one off games. And and I do have Severino as rated as a second best pitcher, but I also have him tied with um, some other guys. Like I have like, Alcantara for Miami against the St. Louis team is also being very viable here. So I would I would uh, and I think that they're going to be lower owned as a result. Uh, Severino maybe not because he just smashed in his last game and they're the Yankees. So, and they're playing Detroit. So I don't think that's going to be particularly, particularly uh, earth shattering, but maybe you can get a semi low on Alcantara. Is that possible? Oh, maybe problem with that is that St. Louis doesn't strike out all that much, but that that's, you know, that's one of those things that's, that's into the projections. It's already in there or whatever, but anyway, what else on this is different? Uh, hitting wise, uh, pitching wise. Yeah, I still have uh, Rodon, uh, kind of a standout over there. And Bassett kind of falls, that, that's, I guess, the important thing. The Bassett falls below Severino and Alcantara over there on FanDuel, at least was what I'm looking at. And let me just look real quick to see what the, uh, the hitting situation is over there, see if it's any different. Yeah, over there, uh, it's still Arizona, Minnesota, uh, Toronto. I do have the Angels popping up a little bit 
Uh, I guess presuming Trout plays, obviously. Um, so I do have the the Angels pop, you know, showing up a little bit in the uh, in the hitting. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would have them rated pretty close to a tie for second. I mean, that Toronto is a real standout over there. Um, but I do have the Angels as somewhat playable over here on uh, on FanDuel. So I hope that was a good enough uh, preview, and uh, if, uh, I hope to be there live with Bobby a little bit later. Uh, if not, good luck, and uh, that'll do it.